Sun. I'm the candidate of Doctor in Musical Arts. Um, and I'll be presenting about Wojciech Sergei Stanimski, and Boris Tishenko. This research aims to explore in depth a court of influential composers known then as the Young Soviet Composers, which includes Sergei Slanimsky and Boris Tishenko. Uh, Boris Tishenko and Sergei Slanimsky are important composers who helped define the landscape of the late 20th century of Russian music. They represent the Leningrad School of Composition. They are also admired pedagogues uh, who are actively teaching and contributing for the development of the young composers in Russia. Mikhail Klinka formed the basis of the Russian Nationalist School, which resulted in the Russian Five in St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg was the residence place of the celebrated Russian Five. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Russian School of Composition, as represented by such composers Rachmaninoff, Spiavin, Prokofiev, and Stravinsky, um, had become one of the most influential trends in the world of classical music. With the change in political climate uh, of the late 1950s, there came a new generation of Russian composers that included Guaidolina, Nisov, Shadrin, Tyshenko, and Planinsky. As distinct of from many of their colleagues, uh, Slavinsky and Tyshenko have remained in St. Petersburg. Uh, they were loyal to the values uh, with, and principles which they once adopted, regardless of the changes in political regimes and artistic trends. Research seeks to address the following specific research questions. To what extent did the young Soviet composers, such as Tyshenko and Slavinsky, understand themselves to constitute new generation of Russian composers? What influence did any uh, composers from Russia and the West have on Tyshenko and Slanimsky? What are the cultural and historical and anthropological context in their compositions, specifically in Slanimsky's The Bell and Boris Tyshenko's Piano Sonata No. 7? The first source um, of the data was through the semi-structured interviews in person with Sergei Slanimsky and associate faculty uh, members of St. Petersburg State Conservatory in Russia. I had a privilege to participate in a music festival called Educational Bridge and travel to St. Petersburg uh, to conduct uh, the interviews. Uh, four interviews have been conducted during this trip. Participants were Sergei Slavinsky, Anton Kanonov, student of Sergei Slavinsky, and chair of compositional department at the St. Petersburg Conservatory. Professor Svetlana Nesterova and Professor Gru uh, Vyacheslav Kruglik, both were former students of Boris Tyshenko. Obtaining, obtaining the score was another challenge in the United States. During my trip to Russia, Sergei Slavinsky had given me stacks of his own scores with autograph on every each page. I had a privilege to dedicate to College of Fine Arts, Boston University, and this is a picture of Slanimsky signing on the every page of, uh, on, of the scores. Sergei Slanimsky is a professor of composition and orchestration at both St. Petersburg Conservatory and Samara Pedagogical University. While teaching at a conservatory, he developed a school of composers musicologist and guided them, many of the, his students into successful career in music. He also holds an honorary membership as an academician in Russian Academy of Education and title of People's Artist, the highest musical award in Russian Federation. Sergei Slanimsky was born in 1932 in St. Petersburg, formerly Leningrad, in a highly educated family. Slavinsky's grandfather was a famous scientist. His father, Mikhail Leonidovich uh, Slavinsky, was a writer and a critic. The composer's aunt, Isabel Vengerova, was a professor at the St. Petersburg State Conservatory 
and later uh, to Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. Professor Anthony Di Bonaventura was a year-long pupil of Imperova Studio. Slavsky's uncle was a famous Russian-born American musicologist, Nicholas Slavsky. Slavsky was particularly interested in the tradition of Russian monophonic linear structures associated with old Russian church and folk singing. Slavsky is a very good pianist himself. He has graduated with a degree in piano performance from St. Petersburg Conservatory. He studied with Vladimir Nielsen, one of the most influential pedagogues of that time. This is probably one of the reasons why piano works occupy such an important place in Slavinsky's compositional output. He continues to appear in concerts playing his own piano compositions. One of his major works for piano solo is Sonata for Piano, a one-movement piano sonata that was composed in 1962. He avoided using traditional sonata allegro form. Instead, he employed one long movement. Another major composition is 24 Preludes and Fugues, which was inspired by Bach. It, it is remarkable to note that three 20th century composers of Russia, Shostakovich, Shadrin, and Slanimsky, composed a large collections of preludes and fugues for the modern piano in the major and minor, minor key. One major composition includes his opera Virginia in seven scenes, ballet Icarus, 13 symphonies, two concertos for piano and orchestra, and many others. Slavinsky is also a devoted pedagogue. He continues to raise young generations of talented composers and organizes concerts for them. And this is a little clip of Slavinsky in my interview. Boris Ivanovich Tishenko is another representative of the Leningrad School of Composition. He was born in 1939 in Leningrad, where he grew up and obtained all the levels in his musical education, and where he resided until his death in December 2010. He studied composition with Galina Oskoskaya, a talented composer uh, and pupil of Dmitry Shostakovich. Boris Tishenko was very much influenced by the music uh, teachers, by his music teachers. Although he tried to use some experimental and modernist idea from West, he was much more attached to the native traditions of his homeland. Shostakovich was a big influence for the younger Soviet composers, especially those of the generation born in the 1930s. Wolfschmidt, in his book Music and Musical Life in Soviet Russia, he states, These, the entire edifice of Soviet music would collapse if Shostakovich's contributions were removed. Tishenko clearly divulges the influence of Shostakovich throughout the work. He uses some of Shostakovich's motifs in his symphony as uh, number five, number three, in his piano concerto, concerto for flute and piano, and piano sonata number five. Tishenko was probably the last pupil of Shostakovich who was extremely close, trusted, and guided by him, and treated with fatherly affection and concern. 
and I would like to share some clip by Professor Nesnerova talking about Tishenko's love for Shostakovich. Oops, sorry. Без боли на Ишуна, вот это были его любимые композиторы. Ну и, конечно, Шестакович, конечно, он показывал, он показывал Шестаковича, анализировал. Mm -hmm. И относился с такой любовью к своему э, учителю. Mm -hmm. Кстати, многие композиторы, которые учились у Дмитрия Ильича Шестаковича, потом пытались от него, как сказать, отделаться. Что Шестакович вроде как я сам, да, вот, а Борис Иванович, он, пожалуй, единственный. Вот, Композитор, который, будучи великим композитором, всегда оставался благодарным и любящим учеником. Это вот тоже человеческое качество удивительное у Бориса Ивановича. Он всегда говорил, что э, у него же постоянно брали интервью по поводу Шостаковича, а он сам как бы заслужил ему это. Он очень часто дает интервью, он спрашивает про Шостаковича, не про него, а про Шостаковича. Да? И он говорит, я никогда ни одному человеку не откажу в интервью о Шостаковиче, потому что это мой любимый учитель. Yeah. Tishenko's own work hardly heard outside Russia. He was a composer of numerous composition output, eight symphonies, two violin concertos, two cello concertos, and piano concerto, six string quartets, two cello sonatas, ten piano sonatas, and other incidental music for theater and film. To reach the understanding of how Russian nationalist and sentiment was achieved in the composition by these composers, I have examined primarily musical cultural conditions of Russia that surrounded the composers. Next, I focused on the treatment of folk songs and church bell sound in the selected works of piano sonata number no. seven and piano pieces by Sergei Sonimsky. Young Soviet composers were searching for their own form and language, new themes and new, th new images. The Soviet music educational system constantly provided for the folkloristic trips but to be made by the students majoring in the composition. Within this compulsory program, all future composers, including Stolimsky and Tishenko, went on such trips around the country. Uh, cities included Novgorod, Skov, and Perm regions. Their task was to report down the folk songs in countryside. Slanivsky attended to local parties, listened to the folk singers, and became acquainted with villages and their distinctive characters. Some songs that he recorded during these trips were later incorporated in his Opera Virginia and his Piano Sonata and others. Boris Tishenko also included settings of several traditional texts in his Piano Sonatas and left some melodies without harmonic accompaniment or bar lines similar to the folk songs. Слонимский talks about three distinctive elements of folk music. Была театроника, вот та, которую любит Орфис Вирин. Music. 
Very good examples are shown in my selective piano pieces in the sonata number no. seven and uh, uh, Bell's uh, by Stravinsky. After the Russian Revolution, Russian music changed dramatically. The early 1920s were the era of avant-garde experiments, inspired by the revolutionary spirit of the era. New trends in music were proposed by enthusiastic clubs, such as Association of Contemporary Music. Slanivsky talked about how small groups of composers gathered together and listened to the recording of Schoenberg, Berg, and Bevern and have analyzed together. However, the Soviet Union has strictly forbid such avant-garde sound and harshly criticized, mocked the young composers who were imitating the Western avant-garde. Composing such music at that time was an act of courage. It was protest against the suppression of freedom. The Western avant-garde still sounded new to domestic ears. It is not surprising that his music attempting at a, re a real renewal and enrichment of the musical language in Russia was banned from the performance. Stalin said, the next day I was expelled from the Union of Composers. All my concerts were canceled. The record company was instructed not to release the records I made. Stalinsky said that he had been fighting for 25 years to establish and preserve his artistic individuality in Soviet Union before it had finally permitted with the release of political pressure in 1990s. Так что, так сказать, знакомство с, с новой музыкой второй половины у нас, собственно, опоздало так лет на 5-10, примерно где-то с 56 по 60-й год мы его восполняли. Потом еще в начале 60-х, первые там 2-3 года мы восполняли эти пробелы знаний и уже могли, значит, как-то в своем творчестве уже, так сказать, не подражая никому, значит, новые средства выразительности, включая серийную технику, значит, игру на струнах фортепиано. В России я первым начал это делать, скажем, в этой самой цикле лирические строфы. Вот. Потом, значит, значит, инструментальный театр, это, это тем очень важно, четверти тона, третий тон. Вот, уже в моей сонате скрипичной написано в 61 году, там есть четверти тона, а после второго и четверти, и третий тон. Вот, то есть микротана. Uh, distinct from many of their colleagues, Sergei Slaninsky and Boris Tishenko have remained in St. Petersburg, Russia. They were loyal to the values and principles they once adopted, regardless of the change in political regions and artistic trends. In my interview, Sanisky talked about why he had not wanted to leave Russia. Прогали, я ни разу не захотел вам Ни разу не захотел. Ну, помимо того, что я довольно хорошо могу сказать, знаю музыкальные языки всех стран, mm -hmm. но язык, значит, разговорный, вот, я, к сожалению, у меня совершенно так же, как у моего отца, нет способностей к языкам. Я говорю по-английски, а по-немецки. Вот. И если мой дядя знал 14 языков японского, я значит, говорю только по-русски, понимаете? А на музыкальном языке я на любом, на японском, на английском, это тоже. Но не только поэтому, понимаете? Вы далеко от крестьянства русского, от деревни, от этих людей самих, мне было бы, наверное, трудно сочинять, даже Рахмани. Мне было бы трудно далеко от фольклора своей страны работать. Вот. Мне, так сказать, я очень привязываюсь к исполнителям, которые здесь ну, многие. Tishenko's piano sonata number no. seven, opus 85 with bells, was composed in 1982. The duration of sonata is 38 minutes. Three different types of bells were used in each movement. First movement, uh, Campanelle uh, natural uh, is used. The second movement, Campanelle tubulari, and third movement, Campanelli bells. Mm -hmm. 
In playing the bell sound into the piano sonata is very unusual. The role of the bell is also very different for each movement. The bell in the first movement opens up the heroic opening. The second movement is, illustrates lyrical and philosophical atmosphere. The third movement gives illusionary, coloristic, heavenly shadow effect. The structure of this sonata is more classical than any other sonatas. Introduction theme unifies the whole movement. It appears in the beginning of each development, recapitulation, and coda. The motivic material is short. It invokes a certain elemental energy. It consists of two or three short rhythmic motifs, which participate steadily in polyphonic alternation, repetition, and overlapping. The dynamic ranges from pianissimo to fortissimo, and it reaches wide range on the keyboard. Like the classical sonatas, the first theme, which starts with note C, leads to the second theme in G, which is the dominant relation. Exposition mirrors in the following recapitulation. It concludes with the bell percussion on the note C and gradually fades away from three forte to pianissimo. Third movement uh, is allegro and is in rondo sonata form. Several sections are divided by returning theme. It is quasi gabot dance like theme that repeats every after every section. Each episode changes radically with unusually frequent changes of the rhythm. Finale concludes with beautiful and light solo of Campanelli bells. The piano presents as only the accompaniment until the end, and bells appear only in the end of the coda in the light dance-like sonority. Slonitsky's bell contains a variety of expressive means and resources of the piano to achieve the unique sound of bell. Slonitsky emphasizes the, and imitates the color, the strength, and poetic qualities of the bell. It opens with a gentle stroke by hand on the open piano strings in the low register. This opening bell serves as a pedal point. The melody is based on the interval fourth and fifth that permeates the entire composition. The main emphasis is given to their timbre and resonance. The employment of different registers, establishing and repeating distinctive rhythmic patterns varying the tempo and dynamic throughout the composition. Influence of the national and international cultures in Sergei Slanimsky and Boris Tyshenko's works should be further investigated, closely examining in their personal experiences and motivations that led the composers to create unique, extraordinary masterpieces. Through interviews with Sergei Slanimsky and students of Tyshenko, these issues must have been understood in more in detail. Slanimsky and Tyshenko were composers who had passed through so many changes and limitations of the time and passed down the tradition and innovation to the next generation of the composers in Russia. Through this research, it is hoped that other musicians, students, and teachers uh, become more familiar in, with the composer's piano music and their fascinating compositional approach. Thank you very much. So with this, I would like to conclude my presentation and I will be performing, um, first I will perform uh, Bells by Sergei Slaninsky. Uh, as a second piece, I will perform the first movement and part of the third movement of Tyshenko's piano sonata. And as concluding piece, I will, I will play Slonimsky's uh, intermezzo in the memory of Brahms.
Thank you.